as young people, we're always responsible, so also for this one, we'll stick to our, uh, to our time schedule. Um, I hope you are all fully loaded with uh, enough coffee and uh, with a lot of energy, because this is going to be an, uh, an energized session, I hope. Uh, we have uh, 10 young people here on the floor, um, and we're going to talk about the experience of, uh, of apprentices. Um, we're going to be with, um, I think, uh, seven, uh, seven um, of them. Um, and I'm first of all going to talk a little bit about the uh, network we have, the European Apprentices Network. It was established not so long ago by the Youth Forum and by Obesu, uh, and it was launched at the, uh, the Malta meeting in May 2017, so only, only a few months ago. Um, we now are in our third meeting, and um, we made up some priorities, uh, some priority setting. We did the last meeting in, uh, in Malta. Uh, we made up uh, seven priorities, and one of them is giving accessible information to young people. Because we see that young people, apprentices themselves, they not only have good accessible information that is also um, interesting for them to read. So, Maybe there is a lot of information, but it has to also be um, readable, accessible, um, and all of that. So, um, first of all, let me introduce myself. Um, I'm Frederick. I'm from Belgium, um, and um, I'm, I'm living in Ghent, if uh, you want to know that. And I'm from the Flemish Youth Council. Um, and I'm also, first of all, giving the floor to Gilemir. Uh, Gilemir and me, we are going to moderate this session. So, Gilemir. Uh, hello, as Roger said, I'm Gilmir. I'm uh, part of the uh, European Apprentice Network, representative of the trade union movement. So first of all, we're going to hear a, a little bit uh, of experience of youngsters. So with us, we have today here uh, Zuzana and Javier. So please introduce yourselves in a short way and tell us what was your experience as an apprentice prior getting the apprenticeship itself. Hello, thank you for the introduction. I'm uh, Susanna, I originally come from Czech Republic and I'm board member of the European Youth Forum. And we are going to talk about the access of information. And I'm one of the examples of the person who couldn't get the apprenticeship because of the lack of the information and also because of the wrong information which I was getting. In my country, apprenticeships and vocational education and trainings is considered as something like when you are not good enough to go to the university, when you are not good enough to go to the high school, you just go to the uh, VET. And for my parents, it was totally not imaginable that their little princess would do some dirty jobs <laughs> as the apprentice. So I was hearing so many stereotypes all the time that it is not for girls, it's just like dirty jobs, you can't get good quality job afterwards, and all these informations. So for me, it was not even the option. I've never thought about that because for me, it would be a failure. And it was just recently when I found out that actually I could get so many great opportunities, but because there was such a lack of the information, we never got any information in my school. Um, so it was always pushed like you have to go to the university, you have to go to the, because we have like in Germany gymnasium, which is like the better high school. So it was always the goal to get there. So this is a little bit my story, how now I'm kind of sad that I couldn't do it because um, for me it would be much more exciting to learn during the working because I even worked like when I was studying at the university, but then I could have it combined and do the apprenticeship. Thank you. Uh, hello everybody. I'm uh, Javier Vicente Mena. I'm from here from Spain and I work in, in Gestamp in Europe North Division. I work here in the Basque Country. Uh, well, for me, the experience was uh, totally the opposite. Well, not totally, I was a princess too, I may say. <laughs> and uh, for me, it was totally the opposite in all sense. For me, uh, I got a, a lot of support, and I was not also, well, I was totally recommended to do this, to do the, the apprenticeship, well, the formación profesional. And I, I don't regret it at all. But it's true that we have, uh, many too much information and indeed uh, at the beginning where you are 
you know, you are too close and too far from the future at the same time. Uh, you don't know what to do, or it can't happen these two things. You know what to do, you're, in, in, you're insecure, you, don't, you know, or you're for sure, you know what to do. So uh, you start receiving speeches in the college, at least that was my case here in Spain. You start receiving people who say, do this, you should go here because the university is great, or you should go to our university. Instead of uh, giving you the point of what you should do, they told you, uh, they are selling you their product, which is a problem. So you start receiving things that it's, it's not what you want to do. You want to know what you want to do. And that's, that's the problem. For at least that was the only problem for me. In the, in the other side, uh, full support, and the transition was quite okay. So I doesn't regret it at all. Okay, uh, thank you, Javier. Thank you, Susana. Uh, just before we continue, we would like to point out that the audience is welcome to ask any questions, and we particularly welcome questions from, the, from young people. Um, so we heard two examples, uh, not, not perfect ones, not, not, not the experience weren't the best, let's say. So there is a problem uh, in lack of information, and it is key for youngsters. Uh, before deciding and before entering the apprentice system. Uh, just maybe a follow-up questions, uh, a question, just one. So uh, besides having uh, support from either family, uh, family or getting enough information, before entering the apprenticeship, Javier, uh, did you have support in all that massive uh, informations and papers that you have to do, so did you have support from the uh, governing institutions or bodies like career centers that uh, guided you through the process, you know, of applying, of filling out this and that, uh, like contracts and stuff like that? Uh, so you mean if I get support from all yeah. the, well, uh, in a, well, it's not the same situation for everybody, I think, and in Spain we're living a very good point to do this. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you see a lot of people in going to university and maybe uh, choose other things when there are uh, there is not too much jobs in here to get. So maybe choose a different thing was good. Mm -hmm. So that's the general idea you get more or less here. Well, maybe in some of your countries is different, but for me that was the experience at all. That maybe I didn't, I didn't make in a, the wrong choice. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to take it over again. Um, first of all, before we go into the, to the next questions and, and next experiences, I want to mention that um, during this whole session, uh, we are going to see, um, or we are going to, to know what information is going through to the apprentice, uh, apprentices before they get an apprenticeship. Uh, this was the first session with, uh, with Jelimir. Um, now we're moving on um, when they have uh, an apprenticeship, do they have enough information? And later on, again with, uh, with Gilemir, we're going to see when they had an apprenticeship, um, do they have enough information to go to the, to the labor market or to uh, educational institutions? So we're now moving on to some, uh, to some um, next uh, apprentices who are going to uh, talk as, um, about the experience they had as uh, an apprentice when they were um, an apprentice himself. Uh, Hannah, uh, go ahead. Uh, hello, my name's Hannah, I'm from Wales in the United Kingdom. Um, so my apprenticeship experience was really poor. Um, I'm actually studying a construction apprenticeship, which isn't usually a subject that is associated with women. Um, so the way apprenticeships are supposed to work, especially in the UK, is that you study something in college that specifically relates to your day-to-day -day work responsibilities. Um, in my situation, uh, we had an instance with my employer where a secretary left and instead of replacing the secretary, they decided that me, the construction apprentice, um, should do this secretarial job. Um, so I was forced to do administration responsibilities instead of actively um, being involved in construction duties as per my chosen apprenticeship pathway. Uh, can I maybe have just a follow-up question for Hannah? So, uh, 
the process of apprenticeship is very important and the quality itself has to be important. So in this case, do you feel that the apprentice, the apprenticeship that you did was misused or even worse, or did you feel exploited? Um, I don't really want to get political, but obviously construction isn't related, isn't considered to be a um, women's subject. Um, but I can almost be certain that if my name was Harry, or I, w I was a man, then I probably wouldn't have been asked to do this administration work, um, and I would have been doing the construction pathway that I was supposed to be doing. Okay. Hi, um, thank oh, you. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Hi, I'm Alicia. I'm from Vitoria, and I'm now doing my work placement. So I think that my case is just the opposite to hers, because. Um, I've studied um, like a kind of maintenance and I've been working as a, for two months I was working as a, an operator so I didn't really do what I was supposed to do but it was so that I could understand everything. Then um, I am currently working as a technician and I am now doing what I'm supposed to do and in a couple of weeks I'll be doing maintenance work too. So. This is why I believe that I will fully satisfy my, what I wanted to do, and I'll be um, putting into practice everything that I've learned at the school. So, in my opinion, everything has been great. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to follow up on this. Um, you know, um, employees, they got social rights, they got workers' rights, but also uh, apprentices got them. Um, do you, did you know in the beginning of your uh, apprenticeship that you had them? Did they inform you actively on it? How did this uh, happen? Well, um, in the very beginning, I didn't know the rights that I had or the things that I had to do. So I was simply given the contract. I signed it, but I didn't really have time to read everything. So. I had to ask for, for advice so that I knew what, I, what my rights were, and I still don't really know them, so. Okay, thank you. Somebody else who wants to comment on this? My name is Lasse, I'm from Denmark, and I'm a board member of the Organizing Bureau of European School Student Unions. So the European organization representing school students and the apprentices as well. And what Alicia is saying is what we hear from our members as well, that a lot of young people don't know their rights when they are in their apprenticeship. This is key to have a nice apprenticeship and a good apprenticeship to know your right, because if you don't know your rights, you're easily exploited by your employer. Um, and you also need to know who to turn to in case that your um, rights are being violated. And these are informations that are not accessible for a lot of young people. Um, and on top of this, we also hear that a lot of apprentices doesn't have the same rights as real employers. Um, so these are some of the points where we really need better information for young apprentices. Okay, thank you, Lasse. I saw that Matthäus maybe wants to comment on this as well. Yes, hello. My name is uh, Matthäus van Ejewski and I come from Germany. And uh, about uh, um, access to information for apprenticeships uh, or apprentices, um, I can say that in Germany we have a system that uh, you have a, a workers' council and you have also an apprenticeships council. And so it, it's based on the size of the company, and then you have to, for example, have young <laughs> five young apprentices representing all rep uh, apprentices from the company. And they have to um, ensure that all the apprentices in your company or in the public administration, for example, they have to they, they have access to all the information, to their rights and also to their responsibilities. So this is a very important uh, institution in the German apprenticeship system. Uh, thank you, Matur. So if we sum up a bit, besides quality apprenticeship, information, information, information. So this is crucial for every youngster that does an apprenticeship. Um, and yeah, because uh, a young person that comes to a workplace, he or she has to know what to do, uh, where to do it, with whom to do it, and how to do it. Uh, moving on, um, on, the, on a period after a young person does an, uh, an apprenticeship, uh, we have an exp uh, experiences as well uh, with Mateus, Mikael, and Manuel. Uh, so could you please share? 
Yes, um, as said, Mateus from Germany. Uh, yeah, I've done my apprenticeship already a few years ago, like six years ago, so I know the time afterwards. But um, still, when we were speaking today about access to information, I was thinking about um, the last month and weeks of my apprenticeship. Then you are very stressed because you need to focus on the final exams, and you want to have a good certificate at the end. You have to, you want to pass the uh, apprenticeship very successful. But on the other side, you need information. So what's going on with your future. So we were, we were in Germany, we have, for example, a, a system, at least in the public service where I am originally from, uh, that you have to be informed three months before your apprenticeship is finishing, if you can stay within the company, within the, the uh, authority, or if you have to look for something else. So this was very, very important for me as a young person, because uh, I got the information that I can stay after my successful apprenticeship um, in this uh, public service. So I didn't, don't need to focus um, on the last weeks of my exams to look for a new job because I had the ensure I had the security that I knew that I can stay there. But this is crucial for young people to know what is happening after the apprenticeship. So have ac access to information if they can stay in the company if, or if they have to look for something else. Thank you, Matthias. Um, anybody else, Manuel? Yeah, my name is Manuel, I'm from Austria, and in Austria you have uh, many possibilities after you finish an apprenticeship, uh, what you can do. Uh, one very interesting thing is, um, after you finish the apprenticeship, you can start to do the A-level. Uh, this is very uh, important for your future, so you can do the A-level, and during this time you, you are free, you don't have to work, and you get paid from the department uh, for this time and after it you can go study uh, to university and, uh, and so on. And there is also another possibility you can uh, study on, it's called in Austria Fachhochschule, it's uh, like a university, only it's more on a practical character and you can start uh, studying there without doing the A-level, so it's um, because the economy uh, in Austria says we need more people in so-called mint areas, so uh, mathematics, informatics, technologies. So if you finished your apprenticeship in a technical area, you can start after it uh, studying in, in, in so-called Fachhochschule. And after it, you have really good possibilities to get a good job and a, a good future for yourself. Another thing I want to uh, say for people who want to start, uh, um, an apprenticeship in Austria, we have a, a very good system with uh, so-called Berufsmessen. That's uh, an event we start before uh, pupils start uh, making an apprenticeship. And these events, there are the, the employees and the pupils meet themselves there and uh, can find together. That's really important because very uh, many young people get their job from this event. Thank you. Uh, Manuel? Hello, my name is Mikel, and I finished my apprenticeship, and I'm going to tell you my opinion. I'm going to speak in Spanish. Um, bueno, mi nombre es Mikel, como comentaba. My name is Mikel, as I was saying, I finished my training. And yes, this was a dual training in Danobat. Dual VET. Dual VET is gaining more and more importance. It's becoming more and more important. I think it is just only necessary for young people because it is true that with this dual training, you are much better trained. And this training is much more specific. So I am very grateful. I am very grateful because I have learned a lot both at college as well as in this company and right now I am in the labor market there. I am, I'm working and I already have, uh, you know, very important skills and I think that this approach was very good compared to normal training. So just to shortly uh, sum up, uh, when punishing an apprentice, uh, it is, the system itself is, is actually regulated. Uh, but it is important that young, youngsters that finish apprenticeships have, the, have several options, either continuing work and how to continue work, or if they decide that they have the possibility to continue with their tertiary education on a higher level. And of course, once they finish apprentice itself and, or decide to continue working, the 
it has to be recognized. So it has to be uh, uh, valued and recognized by other employers that you actually have some experience, that you have gained knowledge. I see there's some movement at the left side of the table, so maybe there's some follow-up or not? Not yeah, sure. we, we were also speaking about uh, the recognition of um, okay. apprenticeships that you just mentioned it. So it would be very important for, for us. Um, for example, Mikael is doing an apprenticeship here in the Basque country. You want to speak uh, about it? Um. Yes, because we had a doubt before and we were saying that it is true that there are more and more young people, more and more students following these uh, vocational training paths. These uh, specific degrees, are do they have recognition abroad in other countries? Because I have been trained in dual VET here in Spain, but what about in Europe? Is there a, a Euro European recognition so that your degree can be recognized in other countries? Well, that is our doubt. Okay, thank you. Um, I hope you gain some deeper understanding um, about the information that is needed for, for apprentices themselves. Um, we're now turning to you. Um, we want to hear some questions from you. Um, we are, as young people, very active, so we will take the microphone and go to you directly. So put your hand up. Um, if you have some questions, I hope there are some. There are some. Um, I don't see any hands. But we still have five minutes. I know it's a tight schedule, but we still have five minutes left. Come on. We also applaud questions from young people. Yes. While we wait, there's no waiting music, but we still have a summary that you can read when it is presented up here. Uh, a summary about the information that uh, has to be given to, to uh, apprentices uh, when it is possible for uh, the technicians uh, to, to put it up. And maybe, sir, you can, uh, of course, ask your question. Thank you. Uh, one of the words that we use a lot in um, apprenticeship vocational sector. Can you maybe speak up a little bit? Yeah, one of the words that we use a lot in apprenticeship sector is called competence. I'm just wondering if anybody like to say what they understand by that word. Thank you. Or if they yes. ever heard about it. <laughs> I'm a person studying education and science, so I can give you quite several <laughs> definitions on the paper which uh, are of this, but I would just like to comment a little bit because it got me kind of to the question of uh, the way how you are deciding about which path are you going to choose. Because, for example, in my school, it was all based, we got the IQ test. And based on that, they gave us recommendation of what kind of job you should do. And that is, in my opinion, really wrong way. And I think that we should a little bit focus more also what, yes, competencies are important for the way how you want to choose your job, of course, but also to look at the desires of the young people and also to look at it also from the really educational perspective of the development and not only to matching of the competences with a future job, because apprenticeships are in the first point about the education, about the learning experience. So I hope that it a little bit answered your question. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. To follow up a bit on Susanna, I think from my point of view, competences is something that we talk a lot about, but it's often neglected when we're in the real world. Um, often apprentices 
do an apprenticeship and they do it just to kind of match the demand from the labor market and that's the main goal of the apprenticeship. Whereas in my world, an apprenticeship is more than just getting a job in a company, it's actually about getting an education and learning more than what a specific job needs. So I think we need to be aware that an apprenticeship is more than just getting a job, it's an educational opportunity as well. And that's where the competencies are important. The competencies are developed when we see apprenticeships as an educational opportunity. Okay, thank you. I've heard from the European Commission that we have to wrap up, uh, so maybe, Susanna, uh, take the floor for, uh, we only have minus one minute, uh, so actually we don't have time, but go ahead, but then it won't be able to, it, 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 was, it, it won't be able to uh, have questions from the floor, but go ahead. It will be one word or two words. Citizenship education and citizenship competences is something that we forgot so much with the apprenticeship, so I just wanted to highlight it. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, thank you, sir, for asking the question. Uh, to everybody, we will be able to, uh, or you will be able to speak to us uh, after uh, after this, this session. You can always come to up, uh, come up to us. I mean, uh, we are young people, always open uh, to your suggestions, your questions. And as a network, we uh, still are open to uh, new members, uh, new young people. So also for the young people in the room, uh, if you have questions, if you have uh, other things to say to us, just come up to us uh, after the meeting. I want to thank uh, everybody on stage. Thank you for your um, information. Thank you uh, for your comments and uh, also thank you for the audience uh, for listening to us. Thanks.